Hello and welcome to the podcast. Big shout out to anybody who supported the Tis the Sizz 2020 edition and sold out our toques with money raised going to the Edmonton Food Bank. I've been trying to come up with my own slogans for uh, the last few days as I'm a little jealous of the success Lisa has gotten from Tis the Sizz. Uh, Grandma's on Llamas didn't go over real well. No, it didn't. Uh, nor did ho, ho 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 the way she goes. <laughs> that was a favorite, though, on the text line. Yes. Uh, but I think I came up with my new slogan, because Tis the Sizz is all about, like, I'm allowed to do whatever I want because of the season, right? Right. Like, your coffee in the morning is 99% Bailey's, and then, like, a little drop of coffee. Tis the Sizz. Doesn't tis, matter. Nothing tis matters. Tis. Okay. So mine, see if you like this. It doesn't rhyme this time. But it's anchor. How is it spelled? Uh, like, I don't know. I don't care how it's spelled. Huh. So, for example, uh, I can't use Ubers this weekend to go to pubs and party with buddies. I don't care. I'm going to take that money and I'm going to spend it all on whatever I'm eating on Sunday night. So, I'm going to buy like a prime rib roast. I don't care. It could be $130 for my roast and potatoes and gravy and I could just be eating by myself. And you know what? Honker. Tis the sis. No. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's it for us for the week. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the show. Or don't, Honker. This is the Ryder and Lisa replay. Brought to you by Southtown Hyundai. Check out the Southtown Hyundai Advantage at SouthtownHyundai.ca. As you know, I'm uh, significantly badass. And this morning, I proved that by already doing something illegal. What'd you do? I raced. I raced my car. And somebody at a red light. Did you win? Well. How did this happen? First of all, like, why would you start racing to begin with? Well, they pulled up on me. They, they pulled, pulled up beside you at a red light. Yeah, and started doing the little, like, mm-hmm, like a little revy and a little movement. Mm-hmm. I knew what they wanted. Okay. They wanted to see what I had under the hood. And I showed him all right. So did you win or not? Like, Whew. get to it. Well, it was close. So you lost. Yeah, but I still, I'd like to just take a minute and share how badass I am for breaking the law at 4 a.m. You always make fun of me and tell me that I'm a terrible driver because I speed. Yeah, but you're speeding in like school zones when there's other cars there around buses and stuff. This was nobody else on the road, just me and my opponent. Anyway, I came up with a way that no matter if you win or lose, you will always win. When you're racing somebody off the line. How do you always line. win? Well, if they beat you, you just record their license plate and report them to the police for dangerous driving. You are the biggest sore <laughs> loser I've ever met. If anybody wants to uh, race me home today, that's fine. I'll see you in the parking lot at around 1130. Hmm. 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 That's all you'll be hearing. What's your favorite Facebook group? There's some ones that really make the whole experience a little better. Yeah. Which, with the tire fire we're dealing with with social media right now, it's important. There's this group on Facebook called My House, Not My Cat. And it's people that just post pictures of cats that are in their house from the neighborhood that don't belong to that household. Right. Cats are just laying on your laptop. Yeah. They're on your kitchen counter. One of my favorite scenes from the Mindy Project is when Mindy's sitting on the couch and she lives alone. She's single, watching a rom-com. And all of a sudden she's petting this cat on her lap. And then she looks down and she's like, oh, what? I don't have a cat. And she pushes it out the window. (laughs) It's so funny. So if you're into stuff like that, hilarious content, go give that a follow. But we're asking you what your favorite Facebook group is. It reminds me a little bit of one of your favorites for sure, something you introduced me to, dog spotting. Oh, dog spotting's great because it can't be your dog. It can't be your friend's dog. It has to be a dog that you see out in public. Right. And you post a video or a picture of it. Sitting outside a coffee shop. Yeah. You see a person with a beautiful dog. You just like do the slow zoom. So they take it so seriously Mm -hmm. to the point where our roommate, Grant Johnson, posted a picture of a porcupine Mm -hmm. in the group saying 10 out of 10 would not pet again. Hilarious concept. Really funny. They blocked him. Yep. He's He's not allowed on there anymore. Gone. So 
It's a serious group. Shane wrote in. We love you, Shane. He said, there's a group called Marvelous Moms in Mournville where all the local Karens join to talk about shady-looking teenagers in town. Nice. I want to get on that group. No. I'd say my favorite uh, group on Facebook, probably, and this is me being serious, is uh, early morning drag racing. Where I talk about just like ripping my car around in the morning. Ryder, you did that once and you lost. Okay, no, that's not what it, what my favorite is. It's actually a positive co-parenting after divorce. Long title and a lot in there, but uh, I found it super awesome to have a community of people that are genuinely trying to be positive about their current situation, right. which can be tough at times, but it's kind of the outlook I took. Like, why not make this experience as positive for everyone involved as possible and it's paid off to a really healthy co-parenting relationship uh my daughter knows she's incredibly loved from two different households and it's it's all worked out and uh, that that page has helped that a lot but also you've said in the past like sometimes you'll see posts or comments and you're like man and i like i have it good yeah compared to some people that are so bitter also that angry who doesn't like that once in a while too to just a wake up (laughs) call that it ain't that bad yeah you're like wait a minute i think i'm doing all right plus a ton of single moms there (laughs) play 107 time for a brand new episode of unnecessary swearing where i put fake swear words into speeches that you may have heard already but they just sound better with swears this started because Connor mcdavid early in his career was a little dull with his interviews. Super boring, we but great guy. Some, we added some swear words. It just gave his speeches the punch they needed. Now, this one, I don't want to take anything away from this speech from Brian Pallister, the Manitoba Premier. It was brilliant as is. It was. And I think it's my favorite speech from a leader so far about COVID because he cut the fat. He got to it. He said the message that... His province needed to hear. He was compassionate. He was sincere. And he was real. We could use that in Alberta. Now, this audio has gone viral worldwide. Correct. Uh, It hasn't gone worldwide yet with the swearing, but I'm hoping for that as well. Because, again, it just punches it up a bit. But seriously, listen to his message. This is the Brian Pallister edition. I will do what I believe is right. And right now, we need to save lives. If you don't think that COVID's real, right now you're a f***ing idiot. You need to understand that we're all in this sh- together. You cannot fail to understand this. So I'm the guy who has to tell you to stay the f- apart at Christmas and in the holiday season you celebrate. Normally with friends and with family that where you share sh- I'm that guy. I'm the guy who's stealing Christmas to keep you safe. Because you need to do this now. You need to do the right thing. You don't need to like me. I hope in uh, years to come you might respect me for having the guts to tell you the right thing. And here's the right thing. Protect each other. Love each other. Care for each other. you got so many ways to show that. But don't get the f*** together this Christmas. <laughs> Powerful, hey? Yeah. Without the swears. Without the swears. Important. Doesn't even need them, but what a way to drive it home. Thanks. Play Seven. Surprising twists at funerals. I'm here for them. It's such a sad day, and you're thinking about someone that you love unconditionally, and they're no longer with you. So when they pull a prank at their own funeral, it's it still makes you sob your eyes out, but it then makes you... I think it would make me even more sad, because I'd mm. be like, oh, I just miss their humor. Why are you doing this to me? This is so much more torture. Well, and it can be like the final burn on someone if you have like an arch nemesis. I heard oh, of somebody no. who put, I buried my fortune at, and then their arch nemesis's address. <laughs> so for years, people would like go and consider digging That's up great. their yard. That's great. Uh, died doing what he loved and then putting something. That- Hilarious, like eating chicken wings. <laughs> right, or like. <laughs> Tindering and driving. I've heard that one before. That's a good one, yeah. Uh, but there was a guy a couple years ago that made headlines for using audio, pretending he was alive in the casket as they <laughs> sent him down. Here's some of that. Hello? 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 
<laughs> and See, he, that would make me ball even more. Yes, hearing their voices. That's okay, sad. though. You're allowed to cry. Yeah. That, that's a good time to get it out. And if you're laughing at the same time, what right. a great way to remember somebody. There was a guy in Trinidad who just made news yesterday who uh, said that he wanted to be embalmed in a sitting position after he passed. So there he was, placed on a chair. Mm-hmm. Uh, as people walked into the funeral. No, he's in the crowd. You know, he was like greeting people kind of as they walked in and then they moved him to the front. But they were also streaming this because of COVID. There was limited people at the funeral. Yeah. And there were a bunch of complaints about why isn't the guy that's sitting there wearing a mask? It was the dead guy. Like it I was- think that would be traumatizing for me. <laughs> I genuinely don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, I wouldn't want to see somebody sitting there like with their eyes open that I'm, you know, it's like getting your dog. What's that called? When you get them taxidermy. Yes, exactly. It would be like getting your, your you'd want to pet it. You'd want to give it treats and then you'd be like, no. Do you know anyone that has a taxidermied cat or dog? No, or- I don't think so. So weird. Very weird. Uh, Shanna wrote in saying, listen. I f- I fully plan on coordinating for someone who's unknown to everyone else in my family to attend my funeral, but they're required to stand far away, dressed kind of fancy with an umbrella, rain or shine, looking stoic and not saying a word. Okay, like I like a scene it. from a movie, yeah, like the mysterious the person across the field. See, I want a That's gla- hilarious. I want a glass casket and I'm going to be butt naked in it. No. What's a surprise twist you could have at your funeral? Captain Crunch texted in saying, I want a casket that has one of those cranks on the side that plays the song all around the mulberry bush, which is the Jack in the Box song. (laughs) Think of the anxiety of everyone being like, what's going to happen to this casket? And then nothing happens. Well, especially if you use the crank to like lower the casket. Oh my gosh, that's so good. And then Carpenter Corey is listening. Thank you so much for listening to the show. He says, my funeral, I think I want to do a video where they're putting me in the ground or whatever, but I also want a countdown for everyone to do a team shotgun one nice. last time. Like That's it. really cute. I like that. Uh, I, I thought of a surprising twist for you, maybe, Lise, where okay. as everybody's like eating their funeral sandwiches, it's like, announcement, you're eating Lisa. Yeah, I'll think about it. Okay. Well, I just thought, all right. What do you got for us, Miles? <laughs> When everybody walks in, I got pictures of the wrong person. Just oh. But the thing that's so funny about that is you're going to see people that you know in the hall and you're like, I'm so sorry. And you're <laughs> hugging each other. And then you all sit down and the picture on the casket is like a woman. <laughs> someone they've never met. Are we at the wrong funeral? Or that's, a celebrity. That's solid, Miles. That's so good. That would be something I could do. <laughs> Thanks for the call, man. And like hand out pamphlets to somebody completely different. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> on top of the picture being different. Uh, I think for mine, it's just what I have planned for my gravestone that I like that'll catch some laughs. Ride or die. Ride or die? No, ride or die. <laughs> Time for acting class where we will both act out the same sentence over and over again with different emotions. And then you tell us who wins. So we have a bunch of emotions written on little slips of paper and a hat and we'll take turns going back and forth. So be honest, who's a better actor? What do you think of the music? Music's good. It's a bit much. Can you like turn it down a bit? Thank you to all your suggestions on the text line of what the the quote should be. I take acting class very seriously. Liz won with her suggestion. So our scene is can I please pet your puppy? Yes. And the Wager, the loser has to eat a bowl of really burnt popcorn. Like black popcorn. Yeah. Burnt. The whole thing. The whole thing. All right. Would you like to go first? Sure. Sorry, these pieces of paper are stuck together. Okay. Thrilled. Can I please pet your puppy? Oh, that's too realistic for you. That was, that was perfect. A, that was a good one. I know. That's what you actually sound like when you ask that, though. <laughs> Empathetic. Ooh, good luck. Can I please pet your puppy? I believed you there. Didn't really make sense, but... Well, it's hard. I pictured the puppy being dead. That's why I was Ryder, empathetic. That's what they say to do in, yeah. if you want to cry in a scene. Just think of a dead animal. <laughs> that's what I learned in acting. Okay. All right, next emotion for me, unhinged. 
<laughs> Back up. <laughs> Please pet your puppy! <laughs> Solid. All right. <laughs> Concerned. Is it dead again in your head? Stop! <laughs> no, it's just Stop sick. It's a just, dead puppy. It's just sick now. Uh, can I please pet your puppy? What was the emotion again? Concerned. Oh, okay. Well, you're getting way easier ones no, than I'm me. Not. All right, my next emotion. Again, you're choosing as the listener who is the better actor. Annoyed. Can I please pet your puppy? <laughs> That's solid. All right, I got one more here. All right. I got really got to bring this home because I think you're leading. <laughs> Stoned. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can I please pet your puppy? <laughs> Congratulations going out to Lisa, who Woo-woo. won the acting class with much easier words to act out. Excuse me? Well, your emotions. Unstrung. Unhinged was hard. Unhinged, simple. Call me Amy Adams. Interesting stats I came across about pet names this year. What are they? Okay, wow. one of my friends is getting a puppy, and her list of her short list of names are so funny to me. Can I say one of them? Pony. I Pony. thought that was so good. Pony for a dog is so funny, and her other one, her other suggestion is Birdie, and I'm like, I love these different animals mm-hmm. as the name for your dog. Totally funny. Uh, but this you may not like as much, according to data from a website Rover.com. Covey. No. Rona. No. And Corona are becoming very popular pet names. I guess the reasoning behind it is that people spent a lot of time with their dogs this year that because of the COVID virus. So I guess it's kind of like... So you want to be reminded of that no, all the time? I don't. If someone's yelling Rona or Covey at the dog park... <laughs> I'm just going to be mad at them. I, well, I'm not going to like them. I'd also run the other way. Like, uh, Kobe! <laughs> hey, Corona, no! No! Um, but yeah, also, so that's up 1,200% Kobe Crazy. Is. That's uh, wild. Fauci has become very popular. He's the like health expert in the States right now. But I was thinking locally, Hinshaw is kind of a cool name for a dog. I find it so interesting how... I've never heard the word Hinshaw until mm-hmm. before this. Like, I didn't even know that was a last name. Strong I've name. never heard it. Strong name. Very strong. But it only makes me think of her. Right. So if somebody named their dog that, I'd be like, but that's not their name. That's Dr. Okay. Dina's name. Well, what do you think when I named my dog Gordon? Did you think of some famous Gordons? No, because it's a it's a popular name, oh. whereas Hinshaw is not. All right. Fair enough. Play 107. Well, this is interesting. Poor guy has to uh, take his PlayStation 5 back. Yeah, he was caught. He bought it, told his wife that it was an air purifier. Well, it kind of looks like one if you if you place it standing upright yeah. instead of on, on the side. On the yeah. side. Uh, she, when she found out <laughs> after trying to use it as an air purifier that it wasn't working, she did a little digging, found out it was a PS5, and has made him return it. <laughs> I mean, it was 500 bucks. Maybe even more if he got it online after someone bought a bunch and then tried to resell them. Listen, I understand this if you're 11 and your parents are worried about you becoming addicted to video games. But he's a grown-ass man. If he wants to drop his hard-earned money on a PS5, let him. Especially when he already did it. I have a buddy... <laughs> This is a really good story. Uh, I have a buddy whose parents would not let him and his three brothers get a PlayStation. I think it was like the OG PlayStation okay. back in the day. Because they that's all they would have done. And there would have been lots of fights and so just no consoles. So they saved up their money together, these four brothers. Went and bought one. Gave it to one of their friends to wrap and give to the oldest one for his birthday. <laughs> So really, they bought it. Yeah, and but pretended. You can't say no to a gift. But his parents are like, "There's no way Riley, who's twelve, just bought you a PlayStation yeah, for where your did birthday. You get, where did you kids steal this from?" But it worked. The That's parents awesome. let them keep it and just like play on a schedule. 
because they pulled this sweet move, which kind of reminds me of this guy. <laughs> well, they're very slick. They're like a nice looking white yeah. console. So it's aesthetically pleasing. So big ups to him for fooling her for <laughs> how knows how long. If he just could have figured out how to make it smoke. Lighter and Lisa. Brought to you by Southtown Hyundai. Play 107.